All right, in this video, I'm gonna be doing some soldering. Um, I'll show you some techniques um, for soldering wire together. And I'm gonna be using uh, 0.5 diameter, uh, 60 over 40 uh, solder. And you wanna use uh, a rosin core solder so that the flux will flow. It's very important. Um, as well as getting a good heat, I use a uh, I use anywhere but from 850 to 900 uh, what you want to take care of. Uh, if you're soldering a trace, you don't want to leave the the soldering iron the trace too long. Here, we're, as far as heat's, heat goes, um, you can um, melt the insulation, so you want to be careful of that, not to heat up the insulation too much. So. And we're going to be joining this wire together. Okay, many applications for joining wires, so I'll leave it to imagination as far as what how you want to use it in the field. Start off by stripping these wires, and there's a couple of different ways you can use this type of stripper, like that, like that. Okay, is this one? So. Pretty reliable. Let's take it. That's pretty much it. You know, I mean, you can take it and go like, you know, this and, and then pull it, but usually I just kind of cut it and then, and that's, uh, that's enough. Now, the first method I'm going to show you is you don't want to twist it up. You want these to be, these wires to be all splayed like that. You, wanna, you don't want them to be twisted. I can intertwine them there. I just sandwich them together so that they're all in there. And you take your soldering iron. Now, when you're using the soldering iron, you want a nice shiny tip, make sure that's, you have what's called tip tinner. You take the tip of the soldering iron and just tin it. It gets it nice and bright and shiny. Now, um, here you can see I have some steel wool over here. I just, you know, dab it in there, but uh, I also have steel wool that I use outside in the field where I don't have a soldering station. I just have the uh, soldering iron. So that's looking prettier than it's looked in years. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got, okay, so we got a nice tip here. I'm gonna sit on the wire a bit and to help it to heat up. And then you just dab it right in the middle, right where they meet. And then you move over. A little more, and you know you want to you want to let the let the wire heat up first. You don't want to just put your soldering iron on and then instantly. See so you, yeah. Now you have to turn it over like that, and that that can be a little challenging in the field. Be you know to turn a wire over, <laughs> but um, it can be done. You just have to remember to do it also because the solder won't go all the way through to the other side. I just I just blow on it to cool it off quicker. And I got a wouldn't say a nice looking joint, but a joint. Use some heat shrink. Right over there. Usually heat shrink comes in two to one. So if you want to measure the diameter that you're gonna put it over. You can eye it. I always just eye it. This is my Harbor Freight special heat gun. Just helps to insulate it. Now we're gonna test this joint right now.
So as you can see that joint and that solder held, it was actually the wire that tore. So good looking joint. Well, maybe not good looking, but strong joint, that's for sure. All right, so I got another bit of wire here. I'm gonna show you a different type of, different type of joint. This one requires a little more, a little more wire. Cause you gotta kinda twist it on itself like that. There we go. And then take your soldering iron, heat it up a bit. People get so bent out of shape when you talk about soldering. So, you know, having the right equipment, it's like, you know, it's like going out on the, in the field and, uh, and using one of those $5, you know, multimeters and trying to work with that. I mean, that would frustrate any of us technicians. So, I just recommend buying good good quality soldering equipment. You're going to make money anyways. I mean, you know, in the first job that you do, uh you're going to you're going to pay for you know, the soldering iron and then some. So, if, you know, and, and these soldering irons, you know, they last for a while. You know, I use the Hako and it's uh it's a great soldering uh soldering I have 3 soldering irons uh, from Hakko. One is a desoldering uh, gun, another is a standalone uh, soldering iron, and then I have the station over here, and they're great. So. so you can see it's a bit bulkier because of the twisty action, but you know, this, this guy right here, it has just a little bit more strength than the previous one. And then you can, you know, uh, wrap it with heat shrink again and, and do that. There's there's one more I'd like to show you. It's my least favorite. You don't have to pull off as much um, insulation on this one. And what I like to do uh, for this one is actually pre-solder the ends. If you pre-solder them, one, it, it makes it so that the wires won't fan out when you try to put it in the butt connector. And it also helps, helps the uh, solder to flow from the wire into the, uh, the butt connector as well. I just heat it up. Now you're gonna see the the solder gets sucked into that connector as if as it heats up. One of the things I don't like about it is you're so close to the insulation you have to hang there for a while so the insulation will start to uh, kind of melt away. You have to make sure that that solder flows into that connector. It's This is not as strong of a joint compared to the other two and you can see what I was talking about with the heat uh, kind of melting that uh, insulation. But, eh, yeah, it does the job. It, you know, it'll, uh, I don't know, I just, I, I really don't use this technique that much. Um, these connectors, you have to buy them, one, with the other techniques, you don't have to buy connectors. And, uh, two, it's, it's physically not as strong. Uh, if I put it on the vise, it's gonna, I'll be able to, you know, rip one of these wires out of here, so... I don't know, it's just another technique I thought I'd show you that 
it's in in the arsenal. You may have an application for it. Who knows? Question came up before about a soldering braid. I'm using a soldering braid, so I'm gonna show you how to use it. The braid is really good for you know small types of connections and sucking up the solder. Um, you do want to, if you're desoldering, uh, let's say I'm gonna desolder one of these <coughs> relays. Let's say this this relay at the end here. Okay, so basically what I would do in this case is just kind of melt each, each uh, solder joint first and then go back and use the braid and you want to sandwich the braid between the soldering iron and the pin like that and you do want to put a little bit of force kind of on there You have to give it time to kind of suck the solder up. Now, once you're done, you think you got all the solder out of there, you can take your uh, soldering iron and just kind of bend the pin back and forth to make sure it wiggles so that you know that all that solder is, is, uh, is, uh, has been wicked away. You always want to use the end. Don't, don't do this action. Um, and then once you're done with the desoldering that pin just go ahead and I'm gonna do two at a time here on these guys there you go so, and there's our relay so you know solder wick has its has its moments I use a desoldering gun just because it's easier but it's also a lot more expensive let's say if you had a uh, capacitor like this one you wanted to replace and you didn't want to bother with desoldering it with you know wick or getting your sod desoldering tool out or the pump you can just heat heat up the solder melt it and then just kind of put, put a little bit of force back and forth on the component you want to take out and then alternate and you're kind of rocking it this way and then that way just a little bit you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it or you could damage the pad and eventually that just kind of works out um, out, out of there put your component in there just kind of hold it and do the same thing just kind of alternate back and forth until you get the component in there And solder it in. Make it look good. That's it. You can use isopropyl uh, to clean up this, make it look nice. If you have a big uh, burnout, you know, one of those boards where it's all black, then uh, you really need to use isopropyl to, to clean it up because that uh, char is conductive and uh, so cleaning it up is a must. Uh, the, this is the brush I use, and what I do is actually, I cut it. If I'm gonna clean up a, a solder joint like I did here, then I use the isopropyl, but with this brush, it doesn't come like this. The brush comes like longer like this, but it gets kind of all over the place. With If you cut the brush like this, you get a really good Kind of a scrubbing action on that on that joint it's gonna it's gonna uh, clean it up a lot better so all right thanks for watching we'll have more videos coming to you